happy to have you here. Uh, it's an honor. Your first night debut hosting yes. The Daily Show. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Fun fact, uh, me and Nancy went to the same high school. Yes. Uh, Scrafford High School, and our mothers taught at Scrafford High School at the mm -hmm. same time. The same time, and yes. we both... Um, Nancy dropped out. I dropped out before you did. I got kicked out. You got kicked out. I got kicked out. So That was the second high school I got kicked out of in yeah. South Carolina. I was a trailblazer. I did it before you. That's right. Uh, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> so are we like the poster children for how much high school sucks and you yeah. don't really need it? Right. Yeah, and and how what we shouldn't have been successful. Like you and I, yeah. to be on the stage tonight, to be on, doing the Daily Show out of the, basically the same stoplight in South Carolina. That's right. We were that close. We're the same age, and we both dropped out or got kicked out of high school, to be here tonight together is a huge testament to uh, hard work mm -hmm. and to values. Um, it's amazing. It's, we should not be where we are today. Should we say something? Uh, yeah. That's true. That is true. But should we say something about pro, being pro high school? I don't want kids to just drop out. No, I don't want my kids dropping out of yeah, high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want your kids dropping out of high school. You got to get right. your high school diploma, and if you get your high school diploma, your kids are more likely to get theirs too. But it's a testament to whether it's divine intervention, a divine right. attraction. It's a testament to hard work, a little bit of good luck. That's right. But um, it's a huge honor to be here and to do this. It's just, Happy it's, to have you. It's awesome. Yeah. And you know, love this guy. Love him. Yeah. The first time we met was backstage at uh, a Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock comedy show in North Charleston, South Carolina. Yep. And somebody snapped this picture. And when I walked back there, y'all was in like a heated debate, kind of. Yeah, we were drinking what? tequila. There was tequila okay. involved. Did you partake in the tequila? I did have some tequila. We were doing shots of tequila, uh, for better or worse. And we had a, a political debate. And basically, from my recollection, is that Dave Chappelle's message was that Republicans need to read the room. And my message is, Every politician, Democrat or Republican, mm -hmm. need to read the room because they aren't paying attention to the people. Mm -hmm. And the people are the ones that elected them to office. And that's what we have to be doing today. Did you feel like uh, prejudged in a way just because you were introduced as a conservative, so he just automatically assumed, you know, what you were about? A little bit. Okay. And I, I'm not your typical Republican. I mm -hmm. would say not typical conservative because when I agree with my party, I support them. When I disagree, I call my party out, and I do it over and over and over again. I would say I have a different flavor of republicanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, you've been described as someone who swings repeatedly between a Trump-centric conservative and an mm -hmm. establishment-bucking centrist. And like you said, you speak out against GOP leadership, but you do vote with the GOP uh, on a majority of issues. So people do want to know, who, who are you? Who is Nancy? I would like to think of myself more as a maverick, right? So when okay. I'm with my party, I support them, I'll vote with them, and then I call them out when I, when I disagree. And some Sometimes it's when I vehemently disagree I and mean, I just booted out the old speaker and got a new speaker in mm -hmm. because I felt like the former speaker wasn't the right leader for our country mm -hmm. and wanted to make a difference in the lives of everybody that we represent. And I buck the party line a lot when it's the right thing to do. And I come from a very independent leaning district. It's not the same low country that you and I grew up in. It's That's very right. purple. It's very, I would almost say small L libertarian. There's uh, there are Democrats, Republicans, and a lot more independents than anybody else. People that are disaffected by the Republican Party and Democrat Party, the, they are, they, they created the majority of the district, very independent-minded. I saw, uh, you know, I saw you did vote against, uh, you voted to get Kevin McCarthy out, but mm -hmm. the GOP said that they got it out for you now. I think I Oh, I bet they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and folks can go to nancymace.org and support me because mm -hmm. they are coming after me. I, I got one of the insiders, one of the establishment insiders, booted out of the speaker's office and got someone who's not bought and paid for mm -hmm. by Washington. I voted with the people on that. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How do you feel about that vote now that the one piece of government Republicans control is in disarray? Well, I would say we're in disarray because Republicans and Democrats alike put us in disarray. I mean, look, our nation has $33 trillion in debt. And it's not just Democrats or Republicans, it's both parties. We're in this mess today, and you're looking at our military. We are spread thin throughout the world, and Israel has all these issues. We've got Ukraine, all these things, and our allies are counting on us, and we can't because of our economic and financial situation that mm -hmm. was created by both parties. So my anger and my frustrations, like a lot of people, is that it's the fault of both sides today, not one or the other. Both sides are at fault, and they need to take responsibility for it. Will Mike Johnson have any real power? Because Kevin McCarthy had none. Well, I would well, I would say that um, 
Kevin McCarthy, well, he, well, I've, we've got a guy today who is going to be honest, mm -hmm. he's going to be trustworthy, and he's going to tell the truth. And I would much rather have a guy that, that I might, <laughs> yeah, he's going to trust me. Um, I'd rather have a guy that I might sometimes vehemently disagree with, mm -hmm. but is going to be trustworthy with me. And I'll tell you one thing that I will share with the, with the other guy, the former speaker, yes was maybe and maybe was no. I learned the hard way on that. And last week we had a couple candidate forums, and I asked all the candidates, what is their message to American women? Because women's issues has been an issue um, that's very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And Mike Johnson was the only guy that came up to me afterwards and said, admitted that, hey, I didn't answer that question to the best of my ability. And I talked to my wife. And, and it's all these other things. It's violence in our communities. It's uh, keeping our kids safe in schools. Mm -hmm. It's all these other things. And it's not necessarily about abortion, but it's about a number of issues that are facing women and moms back at home. And he was the only one to come back and say, hey, I didn't answer that question correctly 100%. And here's what I think about it now. And we're going to work with you on it. And I think that's, that's that shows humility. Mm -hmm. It shows honesty. And that shows trust. And I trust the process. And I think He'll be a better leader than what we had before. What, what do you think uh, about you know this? How do you think he would feel about this now? Because he once said uh, he once wrote that homosexual relationships are inherently unnatural and that gay marriage is the dark harbinger of chaos and sexual anarchy that could doom even the strongest republic. Well, we vote. We voted on gay marriage. I voted for it. Okay. So my positions today are the same as they would be six months ago. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And. My, my position is if you are gay and you want to be as happily or miserably married mm -hmm. as a straight couple, more power <laughs> I, more power to you. If you want to serve our country and take a bullet for our nation, then you ought to be able to do that. And so uh, my position is, is going to be different than the speaker's, and that's okay. But he's a guy that I do believe will be honest and tell the truth. And, you know, Democrats and Republicans didn't trust the last guy. And at least we know where the chess pieces will be on the board and what sandbox we're playing in, and we can figure that out together because we know what we're going to get out of Mike Johnson is the truth and honesty, humility, and someone we can trust, even if we disagree with them. Well, well, what does it say to gay Americans that this man is now the party's leader, though? Like, what if that still is truth, what I just read? Well, I mean, it's not going to pass. The vast majority of members of this con of this Congress, both Republican and Democrat, support LGBTQ, gay marriage. So that's not really going to have an influence on what we do as a House, because we we voted on these things and voted to codify gay marriage. OK. Uh, people are saying you're on the short list to be Trump's VP. After seeing what happened to Mike Pence, <laughs> someone who, you know, was once claimed the future of the GOP by S.E. Cup, is being Trump's running mate really worth it? Well, I haven't been asked yet, and mm -hmm. my focus is, is now on South Carolina, as it always will be. And I understand why people might be talking about it. I do a lot for women's issues, and Republicans lost women last year. But my focus today, as it always will be, I love the low country where you and I grew up in, mm -hmm. and that's where my focus is. Period. Is it intriguing, though? I think it's intriguing. It's interesting. And I, and I think it's, it's a conversation we need to have because I want my little girl to know that she can be president one day. And I want to see Republicans put women on the ticket, vice president, presidential. I mean, I want to see that happen because I want little girls everywhere to know they too can be president one day. So I think it's an important conversation to have, but so are two a lot of other conversations. And you're like one heart attack away if you was like his VP. Well, would you of like being that? president? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, why are Republicans still holding primaries when we know it's going to be Trump? <laughs> well, I mean, Democrats now have a primary with Dean Phillips entering in, into the, uh, the the presidential nomination mm -hmm. process, but it, I do think it's going to be Trump. But um, we'll see. It's part of the Democrat. A democratic process to have primaries and have general elections and just like the speakers fight that's part of democracy that's how we nominate people and and those are fights and elections that we have to have now that the uh, the chaos is over you've got some probable votes coming up mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask you a couple okay. will you vote to expel santos even though it might cost the gop a seat i have not read the the resolution to expel santos mm -hmm. i have demanded his resignation from day one when i found out he lied to get into office the right and honorable thing would be to resign he hasn't done that yet um i'd want to read it and see what the process is if it goes through I'm a civil rights person. I do a lot of civil rights work, but there has to be due process. So does it go through the ethics committee? That would be my first question before I make a decision on that. We may actually be voting on that this week. Mm. Uh, vote to cens censor Representative, Re Representative Talab, I know I'm pronouncing her name wrong, for her Israel Gaza statements. 
The First Amendment is something I want to make sure that we're not violating the Constitution. People get elected, um, but what we're seeing this week, there's going to be a tit for tat. I think Democrats want to censure Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, we just got a new speaker. Israel's under attack. Our economy is crumbling. We have millions of people coming across the border, and this is what we're doing this week. I mean, I just, to me, it just, we have much bigger problems to figure out. Uh, would you vote for Ukraine and Israel aid together? Or would I you prefer want, separate votes? I want and separate, why? I want separate votes. Why? Um, because when we're doing these spending packages, they should be separate individual spending bills. Like, there's a law, the 1974 Budget and Control Act, which says the government, the Congress is supposed to have a budget and 12 different spending bills. But what they're going to do is they're going to try to combine it together so that we jam through over $100 billion in spending. It would be better if they were separate so people can have an up or down vote do we support this or not? Because the two the two wars are completely separate and different, and their needs are different. Mm -hmm. And it would be better for the American people. But what also would be better, whether they are combined into one vote or they are separate votes, we have to have this conversation about the southern border. And what are we going to do to protect our border, protect our national security? Because there are individuals that are on their terrorism watch list. They're coming across our southern border. It'll be over 130, 150 this year. And so to have this conversation, we want to make sure we're not spending more money overseas for other people's borders than our own. And th these are all worthy conversations that we've got to have while we're discussing supplemental aid packages. I, I was, was going to ask you, you know, how do you talk to a poor and disenfranchised person in South Carolina who can barely, you know, put food on their table and have a roof over their head? How do you explain to them why all this money is going overseas? I, I explain that it's the it's the fault of both parties. We are, we are $33 trillion in debt because both sides, no matter who's president, no matter who's in the majority or who's speaker of the House, they have added this debt. And that debt ceiling deal that Republicans just did back in the spring will make our debt over $50 trillion over the next 10 years. And that is why eggs cost $6 for a dozen, while a gallon of milk is $6. It's why you're paying in South Carolina, in some cases, over $4 a gallon of gas. People cannot afford what they're doing. And um, we had August uh, recess, and I was back home for a couple weeks and, and working. But I took my kids to the grocery store. I had, we have seven days on, seven days off, you know, when you're uh, two parent house, two separate households. And I took my kids to the grocery store, and it was almost $500 for a family of four for a week. And I just, that is not affordable. And that was just meat, fruit, and vegetables, and no junk food. And <laughs> they like, hell I, yeah, I where the EBT at? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, uh, but you know, the average American family can't afford $2,000 of groceries or $1,800 a month in groceries. How, who can afford that? Nobody can. But that is the fault of Republicans and Democrats that have spent us into oblivion, who refuse to balance the budget. The former speaker promised to have a plan to balance the budget, and he buried it in a drawer. It exists. But we need to have a plan, whether it's 10, 12, 15, 16, 20 years, that gets spending in order. And the last time we balanced the budget, for example, was in 1998 under Bill Clinton. And before that, it was in the 70s under Nixon. It is ridiculous that both parties can't set their differences aside and do what's right for America. Everybody, no matter their political affiliation. Damn. Wrong. Um, Republicans want to impeach Biden for corruption and bribery. Do you think that's valid, or is it just like a tit for tat because of the two times Trump has been impeached? Well, I can tell you, uh, the former speaker went to conservatives a few months ago and said, hey, we are definitely impeaching Joe Biden. And then he went to House moderates the same day, two hours later, and said, we're never going to impeach Joe Biden. That should not be the answer. That's not leadership. What we should do is follow the facts, follow the truth, and then come to a decision at the right time once we've had due process, once we've shown evidence whether or not an impeachment is warranted. That's what the American people want. That's what they deserve. And that's what we should do. And I, I do believe the, the new speaker will follow due process. He's a constitutional attorney, but won't make that decision in haste. It should be made when it's warranted. You don't think that's a waste of time with everything else that's going on? Well, <laughs> corruption is a real problem in this country. And I have seen bank accounts. <laughs> it is. It is. But I have seen bank accounts of the president's grandchildren with money directly from communist China. That should not be happening in our country. And it should be exposed for every, for every American to see and then decide whether or not that's OK. Whether there's an impeachment or not, I want people to see the evidence that I've seen and make a decision for themselves. Do you believe the evidence against Donald Trump? Wh which, which evidence? All, which, I mean, uh, exactly. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a, which, pick one. <laughs> pick, I mean, pick one of the 91 well, charges. Which, I mean, which, which indictment? I mean, the, which one? It's a lot of them. Let's just say Georgia. 
Georgia, that would be over the election fraud. I, I, I haven't seen the evidence yet. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen it. There will be a trial. Okay. And everyone is allowed, again, I do a lot of civil rights work, and everyone is allowed due process under the law. And if they're found guilty, they take responsibility for that. Um, but I, I haven't seen evidence to show that he's guilty of that. Now, there are a lot of people around him that did a lot of things. There's that Sidney Powell that, that <laughs> took, like, a database, like a voter database, maybe. And I don't know. So it's... <laughs> 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 Congresswoman no, no, Nancy no. Mace, ladies and gentlemen.